Oscar Encarnación Liz of uh, the C third of uh, Dominican Republic. His uh, cybersecurity engineering of the C-CERT of the Dominican Republic, and uh, he's the Alamed uh, group of experts. He's going to present uh, discovering uh, uh, occult uh, threats, uh, uncovering hidden threats in a red line steel logs with automation assisted intelligence. We're going to have 30 minutes for this presentation, so go ahead. Excellent. Good morning, each and all of you. I hope uh, you're doing well in spite of last night's party. Before I start, I'd like a round of applause to call the attention of the other people so that they will come in. Help me with that, please. Good. So today I'm going to talk about a research and investigation case where the entire team of the uh, National Center for Incident Response of Dominican Republic, the CSERT um, RD. Uh, this, this, in this case, the name of the presentation is uncovering the hidden things, what you can't see. So today I'm going to start presenting a tool that is uh, already well known by all of us as uh, technology uh, or cybersecurity experts. This is called uh, the uh, pond, uh, and where we can see the whether there are any compromises of our email or if our passwords have been compromised in other websites. I'm going to give you a brief presentation covering what the user would see in this case with a government account of my country. In this case, there's an alert stating that it was pawned or that it's leaked to other websites and this. so. We, you may wonder wh how come our data may be exposed elsewhere. Well, it's very simple because attackers have the, the main aim is to compromise certain sources to acquire privileged access to certain resources and services of organization to later on affect either the reputation or to uh, benefit from that. So what are stealers? This is a malware variant that is very well known. Basically, it boomed during the pandemic. The known variants was Recon Steelers, Zeus, and some others that I'll describe in detail later on. The funny thing about this variant, uh, this malware, is how the, its capability for propagating and uh, the um, way it acts. Its main focus is uh, it, it targets users mainly, or um, it targets companies. In this case, we see that this variant of the malware, if we look at the trends, we see that it always ranks first, either on a weekly, monthly, or even annual basis even beating other well-known uh, um, malware like uh, Stutnets or WannaCry. Throughout history, those were very popular malwares because of the capability they had to affect uh, both uh, government uh, agencies and well-known companies. So here, this refers to the uh, compromise indicators and basically it gives a brief account here on this image i show the objective of this malware tool basically after downloading 
a file that we acknowledge as legitimate or an app after it is implemented throughout uh, the, the network, we see that it starts extracting um, information of uh, credit cards or everything that has to do with self-complete, auto-completing, auto-filling and navigating cookies, um, Lewins, things that we have stored in our uh, PCs, uh, um, cryptocurrency apps, uh, gaming apps, uh, and all that information after being compiled, it is uh, directed to a command and control uh, center. And uh, what, but the difficult thing about this malware is that the infiltration method that they use is almost undetectable. The way these uh, cyber attackers uh, operate as a group is quite interesting. Let's say that they are not so creative for their distribution method because it is extremely simple and very well known. They do it through phishing, social engineering. They distribute or uh, uh, the, these payloads that is the executables that contain malicious code. In addition to the fact that this can be found very easily in other illegitimate sites that look legitimate. And we as regular users and not being aware of the fact, we are infected by this variant. It's very interesting. Here we can see a state of the art of uh, the infection method or the distribution of this variant. For instance, we see that with a OneNote uh, file that we imported into our uh, machine, we can say, well, in this, in this file, we can find information of some file that I was sent, a PDF or whatever. So you can find the credentials or something like that. So after importing that file in our app, we start seeing abnormal behavior that, that may go unnoticed and um, EDRs or antiviruses, other security tools, uh, that are very useful and that we use uh, daily for to monitor our host and do fail to detect them. So we see how things uh, get changed and they get downloaded from dot .bat files and they contain malicious um, things and they will start infecting the machine and uh, drawing valuable information. After that, it goes on with uh, uh, tasks that uh, are executed uh, uh, for hours and and uh, they're going to ask, uh, should I, uh, I, do I execute myself or not? Uh, in the sandbox. And then here, this malware, I realized, or we've realized, that this is developed in C or C char. It's based on vulnerabilities, either of the file itself or the benign um, app that we downloaded and um, those uh, and then it permits to execute code in our OS and finally after this malicious file compiles all the information it needs it is sent to a command and control server that is administered as a cyber attacker here we see a small example of a very well-known app. It may be WinRAR, um, uh, 7-Zip, Adobe, Microsoft Office, and many more. This is very recent. I found this yesterday with 7-Zip. I found that when I was trying to download a regular file. I saw one that was on top of the official account. 
so and I saw that they were advertising it so that it would be as an overlay to the respect uh, the uh, official site. I entered and I could see that it was similar to the original um, app and I could uh, download the file and the defender but and uh, it, it gave me a warning my windows defender gave me a warning but as a conventional user we can say well that's okay let's install it and clearly we we don't see any additional processes we don't see anything and we may be eager to use the app and we'll use it so as analysts, as security analysts, we already know the threats. We see that it's quite latent in our community. So we are going to analyze these variants using tools that are quite affordable and easy to use, such as Wireshark. And we can uh, work with a number of packs, packets and when we put them in our laptop we see that they are in in contact with command and control centers in addition to that we can see that it already starts after a given time it starts to download this and that is where the creation of certain anomalous processes start taking place but they're almost imperceptible because they seem like the real ones like the ones we could have in a computer on a daily basis so this already raises a flag so after all this and using the mitra matrix we can observe that this already uses tactics, techniques, and procedures that are well known, like the process injection, which is what I mentioned before. It starts to download certain files, and then it goes downloading additional modules. And in this case, if this is blocked by the antivirus, it downloads a temporary file or simulates certain files in our OS that might seem quite common and at first sight. Now, after that, we see detection evasion. The antivirus does not detect it because the antivirus says, well, I already saw this or something like that. So it is imperceptible and goes into our computer. So as we can see here in greater detail, this is the delivery mode through phishing or we can see the executable part so the user starts to install this or so the person in charge of the IT infrastructure installs it and starts configuring command and control and then it starts to compile information and take screenshots of the machine to steal the cookies and the credentials stored in the browser cards and stores all this. So once this information is compiled, it is exfiltrated through advanced methods. We have seen that analyzing this in the CCS in a web page, we have seen how this is filtered and they inject code in these portals that have been compromised by these groups of attackers. And we see how this is almost undetectable. So, curiously enough, that information is shared and it is categorized by the attackers and contains information as to the country of origin. They specifically state if this is bank information, etc. So, the pattern in which it is subdivided is quite interesting and they are quite well organized. Here we can see what we can view when compiling these files here. This is the screenshots it took at any moment from the user's machine. We can also see the organization of the data it contains 
for example, credentials, information on the user, features of the machine. You say, well, this device has eight RAM, a server, a given size in the CPU, in addition to other information, credentials stored in the browser. Now, how is all this affecting Latin America? We have detected quite an interesting pattern and not only in our region or our country. This is something that we have massively observed in the sense of a flow of files to Brazil, Mexico, Chile, Argentina, Belize, and to many more countries. So all this is something that we can correlate in terms of profiles with very popular markets where you can find this type of data, such as bridge forums, and these are portals or websites where we can find cyber criminals. So, of course, this involves intelligence. And what do I mean with this? This is like a game. It appears to be like a game because you have to gain trust, you have to scale, and all this involves an effort by the researchers of each organization. So in order to gain reputation in those markets and then obtain information, this can be obtained free of charge or on a payment basis. And this is all done through bitcoins as well as cryptocurrency transactions. We can see that after we obtain the reputation and are authenticated, we can view the different profiles. And we have see very popular distributors. And we see all this malware information. The packets, the information packets, go from $100 to $2,500. These are offered as plans. So you can have access for one week or for a lifetime or for one year, and all this costs money. And this is quite interesting, namely how the model markets all this and how they operate very clearly. Law enforcement such as Interpol, FBI, and CIA are behind this trying to find these profiles. But they are quite smart and use methods and apply many tactics so as not to be detected and so that they are not found. These here are some of the variants that operate in a similar way or were somehow predecessors of this new variant. And these are, for example, Zeus, Drydex, PyEye, Gozi, and Panda Banker. The idea with these variants was that initially they only stole banking information. And that was the limitation. They only focused on what they could obtain, information such as credit cards, compared to red line stealers that also try to find patterns or information that could be relevant for the user. And then they extract all this information, which is then sent to a server and then distributed by certain means. Now, once we are aware of the threat or of this latent threat, we make use of the collected information. Now, how do we go about this? We can find logs such as these that are free of charge. Some is through Telegram groups or GitHub or Twitter. We have all this type of information that is uploaded and we can then download it. But thinking beyond this, because the cyber attackers are always ahead of us, we try to figure out ways of being just a small step behind them or as close as possible. So what do we do? I know it's not at all easy to download this, this information because these are packets that are massively generated and several times a day. So what have we done? We developed a set of tools and from different sources 
they recover files such as these. These are then decompressed and are used to obtain specific information of what is sought. In this case, we used it to filter this by region or by critical sector, for example, government sector, banking sector. Here we can see a brief, a small preview of the script that we prepared. This contains information from the deep web and from Twitter, as well as from other interesting sources. This has already gone through a CTI process, as we call it, where this filters the information and following that, this is injected into a database and put in the form of a maquette to see so that the, all the analysts can see what is happening with the program and how we can view this in the dashboard. And this is quite interesting and it is more user friendly. It minimizes the download time and extracting files and reading these, etc. So we have seen that when you download the files, it already contains malicious binaries and then we put past the antivirus and these are then eliminated. So in this way, we use scripting methods to avoid problems such as those so that the antivirus doesn't delete all that. So the information is inserted here. We can also find information in the dark web or in the surface web. After a brief preview of the dashboards, well, all this is like a white brand. We can personalize this depending on the organization whose accounts wish to monitor. I included LACNIC here, but it could be just any other organization. And we apply filters to monitor given organizations. So that is a test we carry out on a daily basis. You can also show this. You can show the source if it was a... Um, and, and all the sources where this information was compiled. So it could be a ransomware attack and then we extract the information from some sources or from the spillers that already stole information from us. So, and we make a brief comment. We have seen how organizations, I'm com I come from Dominican Republic, there are critical infrastructures that were already compromised by these situations and this data had been linked. So as soon as we see this and based on the procedures we have in place, we apply controls such as NFA or we change the accounts or we simply check the log logs to see if there has been some kind of anomalous pattern in the previous days. We have seen that many credentials are accessible, whether from banks or cryptocurrencies or others. This, in addition of the automated system, we have several use cases. We use a template that has a list of the people who are affected, the organization, on what date. This here shows an example of the script we developed for this purpose. So after all that, when we compile all these malware samples that we detected and that can affect the entire region, we decided to analyze these. Although he, you cannot see this very well, when we do reverse engineering in all the executing agents that we have, we see functions that exfiltrate information or verify that there are applications that were previously installed, for example, configuration files in VPN. So it compiles information from the VPN. And then this can be connected directly to the server. So with the previously extracted credentials, it can have 
access to the entire infrastructure and really can produce chaos. What else can we find here? We find the functions used for exfiltrating the information. Now, this analysis is not so easy as it might seem at first sight because attackers seek to do some rabbit holes and other techniques that then makes analysis more difficult. Now, this is part of the data recovered from the parcels, uh, from the packets. This is raw data. We download the file, we decompress it, and so on. And if we can try and test credentials, we sometimes see that we can access these. The user hasn't changed the credentials or hasn't applied certain controls. Now, the interesting thing is that attackers work as organizations. We can find the software, the red line stealer or the command and control. If we already paid what we call a membership or if law enforcement has access to certain servers for some given vulnerability, we then see what the software they use is about, and we see then which the specifications are that you need. You need to have these uh, resources in order to deploy this in one of the servers. And obviously, they don't buy their own servers from any VPS or a cloud provider, but they already commit other servers, which are then used as servers themselves. So this makes investigation and follow-up much more difficult regarding these threats. In addition to already knowing the threat or the danger of this malicious software or how it interacts, all our role is also is preventing this from happening. So not only do we, uh, we, we have to be proactive with open source solutions and uh, prepaid uh, solutions, we have uh, prevented those threats from uh, being downloaded automatically, either with data filtration apps or uh, with evasion techniques. And as soon as we start running this tool with the end uh, devices, we see that they observe all when you as, as you observe the daily uh, uh, behavior of the machine that uh, feeds the deep learning so for instance consulting the united states we see that for instance there may be outbound uh, uh, packs that uh, start uh, growing and growing so uh, there are people stopping the threats. So once the alert uh, is uh, uh, emitted, then the analyst starts analyzing what's happening and notifies the authorities and prevents this from happening. Clearly, we evolve uh, as the attackers because they innovate on a daily basis and sometimes we remain quite... Uh, um, uh, we... we um, uh, stagnant. So I leave you with this sentence, and it is that in Latin America, we don't need uh, tools that will fix everything, but we need uh, professionals or analysts that like cybersecurity, because it's important to highlight that uh, no matter how proactive we can be, we need to continue learning and innovating. So with this, I uh, close my presentation and here I leave you my data. If you need any contribution, any support, I'm ready to help. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar, for your presentation. There's, uh, we, we have enough time for a question. Any brave uh, people in the audience with a question? N there are no courageous people in the room, nor do we have any in via Zoom. Apparently, it's either too early in the morning or everybody understood. So 
another round of applause for Oscar. Thank you. That was an excellent presentation. And we hope uh, to see you participate in the next technical forum. In